in the pen of a, a journalist, a woman who writes a computer column for the San Francisco Examiner had received in her mailbox a copy of this article in GQ in which uh, Timothy Leary is quoted as saying, the uh, Japanese go to Burma for teak and they go to California for novelty and creativity. And everybody knows that California has this resource thanks to psychedelics. And there again, it uh, quoted me as the supplier of a scientific renaissance in the 1960s. And <clears throat> this columnist didn't believe what was asserted by Timothy Leary and others in the GQ article that the computer revolution and the computer graphic innovations of California had been built upon a psychedelic foundation. So she set out to prove that this story was false. She was about to go to SIGGRAPH, the largest gathering of computer graphic professionals in the world annually, somewhere in the United States, 30,000 or so people gather, all of whom are vitally involved in the computer revolution. She thought she would set this heresy to rest by conducting a, a sample survey at SIGGRAPH a year ago in Las Vegas. She began her interviews at the airport the minute she stepped off the plane, and by the time she got back to her desk in San Francisco, had talked to 180 important professionals of the computer graphic field, all of whom answered yes to her question, do you take psychedelics and is this important in your work? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've decided today, um, <clears throat> by popular request, to tell the truth. <laughs> and <clears throat> uh, this is um, perhaps uh, relevant to our theme for today, a uh, different aspect of vision, and our theme this morning of psychedelics and mathematical vision. So it all began in 1967 when I was a professor of mathematics at Princeton and one of my students turned me on to LSD. That led to my moving to California a year later and to my meeting uh, at UC Santa Cruz, a chemistry graduate student who was doing his PhD thesis on the synthesis of DMT. Uh, he and I smoked up a large bottle of DMT in 1969. And that resulted in a kind of secret resolve <clears throat> which uh, swerved my career to, an ex to, to a search for the connections between mathematics and the experience of the logos or what Terence calls the transcendent other. This hyperdimensional space full of meaning and wisdom and beauty which feels more real than ordinary reality and to which we have returned many times over the years for in instruction and pleasure. And uh, in the course of the, the next 20 years, there were various steps I took to explore this connection between mathematics and the logos. Uh, for example, I apprenticed myself to neurophysiologist and tried to construct brain models made out of the basic objects of chaos theory. Um, this was about the time that chaos theory was discovered by the scientific community and the chaos revolution began in 1973. I built a vibrating fluid machine to visualize uh, vibrations in transparent media because I felt on the basis of direct experience that the Hindu metaphor of vibrations was uh, an important one, a valuable one and therefore that we could learn more about consciousness, communication, resonance, and the emergence of form and pattern in the physical, biological, social, and intellectual worlds through actually watching vibrations in transparent media ordinarily invisible and making them visible. I was inspired by Hans Janey, an amateur scientist in Switzerland, a follower of Rudolf Steiner, who had built an in ingenious gadget for rendering these transparent fluids visible. About this time, we discovered in Santa Cruz computer graphics, because the first affordable computer graphic terminals had appeared on the market, I started a project of teaching mathematics with computer graphics 
and eventually tried to simulate the mathematical models for neurophysiology and for vibrating fluids in computer programs with computer graphic displays. Uh, in this way evolved a new class of mathematical models called CDs, cellular dynamita. They are a really especially appropriate mathematical object for modeling or trying to understand the brain, the mind, the visionary experience, and so on, as far as close anyway as mathematics could come to um, simulation of this experience. At the same time, other uh, mathematicians, uh, some of whom may have been uh, recipients of my gifts in the 1960s, began their own experiments with computer graphics in different places and began to make films, which I used to show in annual uh, film revoyance of this evening later on and uh, many years later when I would be sitting in this theater watching a computer graphic film made by Tom Banchoff. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Eventually, we were able to construct machines in Santa Cruz which could simulate these kind of mathematical models that I call CDs at a reasonable speed, first slowly and then faster and faster. And in 1989, I had uh, a fantastic experience at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland where I was given access to, at uh, that time, the fastest supercomputer, the MPP, the Massively Parallel Processor. And my CD model for the visual cortex had been programmed into this machine by the only person able to, to program it, and I was invited to come and view the result. And looking at the color screen of this supercomputer was like looking through the window at the future and seeing uh, a, an excellent um, memory of a DMT vision not only preceding a pace on the screen but also uh, going about a hundred times faster than a human experience and also under the control of knobs which I could turn at the terminal and so returning to my story now, and I'll quickly bring it to a close, there is, uh, first of all, a 20-year evolution from my uh, DMT year, 1969, to my MPP year, 1989. And following this 20-year uh, evolution and that, uh, the recording of that video, we had uh, two things that I'll mention. One is the story with GQ and SIGGRAPH and the examiner that I've told you, which essentially poses the question then, has a psychedelic had an influence in the evolution of science, mathematics, the computer revolution, computer graphics, and so on. And at the other event, in 1990, um, we got to see after, I think, the uh, publication of a paper on this in the International Journal of Bifurcation and Chaos, we saw an interesting article in the monthly notices of the American Mathematical Society, the largest union of uh, research mathematicians in the world, which amazingly redefined mathematics, dropping number and geometrical spaces as relics of history, and adopting a new definition of mathematics as the study of space-time pattern. So this is not written by me. This is just in the pages of, uh, of science and the monthly notices of the American Mathematical Society. So we have to admit that uh, mathematics has been reborn, and this um, rebirth is some kind of outcome, of, apparently, of the computer revolution and the psychedelic revolution which took place concurrently, concomitantly, cooperatively in the 1960s. Right. Time, time to uh, open up for uh, our interaction on the larger scale. Customarily, we, the, uh, whoever does the induction also summarizes or concludes. I, I, I don't feel I have the wherewithal to really conclude this. I would like to um, just end our trialogue with uh, a kind of emotional reaction to the synthesis of, of all this 
uh, what I see as <laughs> negative feedback to <laughs> not only my <laughs> idea this morning, but also my life work. I'm going to, to, to say that I... Um, this was kind of a strategy that uh, uh, backfired. I chose to, uh, uh, out of, uh, fr from an initial statement where I put mathematics on a fairly high pedestal there as the, um, the marriage counselor of Father Sky and Mother Earth, I uh, then, for the sake of discussion with uh, these guys for our own group mind, I scaled down the image of mathematics to an extension of language, a kind of language, a visual language, and so on, because we have to actually discuss mathematics here without really knowing what it is. It's a study of space-time pattern or something. I just want to end by saying this, that mathematics is part of the natural world. It is not an extension, it's just part of the natural world. Mathematics is a landscape which can be explored as simply and directly and with much incredible uh, pleasure, delight, and advancement as the psychedelic logos or any other aspect of the intellect. Mathematical landscape does not belong to the human species. It belongs uh, not to the earth, but to the sky. It's part of the infinite universe we, we live in. And whatever microscopes, telescopes, chaoscopes, and computer graphic tools we can devise to enhance our vision of the mathematical universe is uh, definitely advantageous. How that this will fit into society, however, we admit that we are in a problem. Uh, we are in a cultural problem. We are in an evolutionary challenge from which the human species may not survive. Part of our difficulty is the rejection, I mean, this is perhaps a small part, but uh, mathematics is essential in the marriage of Father Sky and Mother Earth, and our culture has totally rejected mathematics. Uh, so it's possible that that's part of the problem, and uh, that's what kind of what I've given my life work to, as it were. So... The uh, answer to the question on the psychedelic and the mathematical vision um, is that there is a relationship and is kind of abstract because we're stymied, I guess, uh, this, uh, to summarize our discussion by bad habits of the human species at the present time. So I'll leave it there.